Hey, what's up you guys? In today's video, I'm going to show you my helmet build or setup as I got a lot of questions about it. So in this video, I hope to answer all of your questions. If you haven't seen my general loadout video, you should check that out for a detailed gear description and how I set everything up on my body. You can find it in the link in the description and in the info card in the top right corner. So let's begin. The base is an Emerson Bump type helmet that came in Atex and was because of that super cheap. I repainted it, which I also published a video about. How to paint your helmet, link is of course in the description. On top of that, I put a random helmet cover, the cheapest I could find actually, and aged it a little bit with spray paint. More tips like that you could find in the video I was just talking about. In the front, I run a Brain Exploder NVG GoPro mount to hold my GoPro Hero 5 in a custom made housing. I also made a tutorial about, check that in the notification card now. The GoPro is secured in place and prevented from shaking and wiggling with the little bungees you would use for your rear knots. For me, the GoPro is the best action camera I ever used. It works perfectly for me and gives me the style of footage I want to edit and put on the internet. If you like the side-mounted cameras, check out a fantastic video of Pain X about recording airsoft gameplays. It's really in-depth and I agree with him almost 100%. I just like to run my GoPro on my NVG shroud as I don't have real night vision. Otherwise, I would use his setup as well. The link is in the description as well. From the GoPro in the front, I routed a GoPro charging cable to the back of the helmet. Here I have a 10,000 ma or milliampere battery pack that sits in a Milsom West battery pouch. This powers and charges my GoPro while being on the field for an entire day, easily. I also secured the battery pouch with some little paracord so it can't fall off if I ever run in a tree or something. For my ear protection, I use MSA Sordens without a microphone. This ear pro is very comfortable and works absolutely fantastic in loud environments. It saved my ears a couple of times, especially at OP Overwatch in these long prison halls where bangers would thrown constantly and explode next to you and it was just really loud. Also, they tend to push your hearing ability sometimes in close quarters situations. Even though the low-end Sordens don't come with a microphone, they do come with an aux exit. That means you can run a simple 3.5 mm aux cable from example your PTT speaker mic to your ear pro to hear what's going on. Especially useful if you're in a sneaky situation and you don't want your radio to give you away. The MSA Sordens are mounted on arc rails on my helmet. That was actually quite a hassle to accomplish as there is no easy and cheap solution to do so. Though the perfect solution actually would be to use the Unity Tactical Sara Sword and Arc Rail adapters, but they come in at around $62 and they're nowhere to be found in Germany. So I went with a little bit of a workaround. I used the FMA Arc Rail adapters for Peltors as they're the only aftermarket adapters with the little hooks in the end that wrap around your sword and holding parts that are not made out of plastic. To get the sword and off the headband and onto the arc rail adapters, you need circlip pliers. I found a great tutorial and I will link it in the description as well. It's exactly what I did with mine. Once you get them onto the arc rail adapters, they stay up there and they swivel perfectly to the back and everything just works super good. In front of my ear pro on the left side, I had a Night Evolution MPL S3 helmet light. It had three different modes, white, red, and infrared. And red is actually really handy for night operations and it doesn't give you easily away as white light. It was absolutely perfect, but I lost it at around an hour of the beer zone. I guess it wasn't that snuck on a helmet. But well, let's say helmet lights are really handy at night to read maps, repair or your gear and of course to look cool. Now to the more noticeable part of my helmet, the Camonet or how the Amped Airsoft guys like to say the Ragnar. So what I used is just a super cheap sniper camouflage net I got off the internet. I attached it in two layers with some bungee paracord on top of the helmet, which was actually quite a lot of work as I want it to be symmetrical. For that I used the little tabs that come with the magazine pouches to retain your magazine with the little bungee cord. I weaved the big bungee cord through the ventilation holes onto the helmet and knotted everything together. For that I also needed to cut some holes into the cover 
but that was okay for me. I got the entire idea while watching a video about the war bungee by War Sports Industries and I thought I can do that myself for zero money as I had some bungee cord laying around for my handguard mod. So yeah, why not to try it? The video is of course in the description. There you can also see the weave pattern you use to go through the helmet and onto the helmet. It's a bit complicated and it takes some time but it's really hard to recreate it. You just have to try it yourself. For my face protection, I use a TMC mesh mask. It's the perfect hybrid of regular mesh mask, I don't really like their look, and a soft mask. They are absolutely perfect to protect your teeth and they don't get into your way while aiming down sight. It can get quite hot under there in the summer, though still better than sweat than run around with no teeth. I also gave the mesh mask and the fabric a little paint job to look even more cool. For my eye protection, I used the already pretty beat up Vulcan Sierra goggles. They are quite cheap and work perfectly for me as they are not too big and not too small. To prevent them from fogging, I widened the openings with some scissors for more air ventilation. Overall, they are great goggles for a great price and they don't fog that easily. Also because of the part that sits on your face is not made out of foam. They're kind of like diving goggles, but protect your eyes from BBs. And that's already it for this little rundown helmet info video. I hope you got something out of the information I gave you to build your own awesome helmet. So in the end, I really like my helmet and I don't mind it at all, even over long periods of time, especially because it protects my dome. Without wearing it, I would have had at least three heavy concussions as I tend to run into stuff. So if you don't have a helmet, think about getting one to protect your temple. Other than that, I see you next week. Until then, bye.